All right, Lisa, thank you very, very much. So forget this battle between the parties right now. Uh, if Democrats were to seize the House, who's going to lead them? I raised this with Ohio Democratic Congressman Tim Ryan. You might recall he had challenged Nancy Pelosi for the leadership. Take a look. We need new leadership, and I'll just say, you know, I think the new members coming in need to be our priority. Do you think she should lead Democrats? My, my position hasn't changed on that. Okay. <laughs> it's, the, it's the same. I, again, I mean, we, we need people who can go into these congressional districts, and we've got to get back to, yes, health care. All right, so if Democrats take over, new leadership to help them do it, uh, Attorney uh, Jenna Ellis, Democratic strategist Antoine Seabright, and Kat Tim, finally. Kat, what do you think? I think that the Democrats obviously need some new leadership. I think that they're pretty much sick of the old Democrats. And I mean, look at what happened in the last election with Hillary Clinton actually losing to Donald Trump, which a lot of people thought was actually impossible. It really happened. We saw some movements of, of going further left. A lot of the younger people are even further left than a lot of the older Democrats are. So I see the party moving f further left, and I see that they might need leadership to reflect that. Antoine, um, you know, uh, Nancy Pelosi, you will aware, she's a gifted fundraiser. She raised a lot of money for the party. Um, but a lot of, you know, the lieutenants or the, the, the younger, you know, sort of renegades, uh, I, I put Ryan in that group, is saying, you know, maybe now's the time we consider a shift in, in leadership. I think the word new is definitely subjective and not objective. I think there will be some changes in leadership. Um, but what that looks like will ultimately be determined by how much Democrats win the Congress come um, Tuesday, November 6th. In other words, if they were to seize the House and, and get much more than 23 seats. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, and then would that be Nancy Pelosi's leadership post to lose? Uh, I, what we don't know, but we've seen a number of candidates all across the uh, country who said they would not vote for her. We've right. seen some sitting members say they would not. What I know, there's a tremendous opportunity to make history and elevate uh, Jim Clyburn to be uh, in a uh, higher post in, in leadership. He will be with the first African American to ascend to that post. There but if they selected Nancy Pelosi, would you as a Democrat be disappointed? I, I don't think that will happen because guess what? I don't know if members who publicly said on the record they would not vote for her can go back on their word because they'll spend the next two years campaigning trying to explain why they voted the way they did. And so, look, I don't get uh, too caught up in inside the baseball politics. What I'm more concerned about how much we win the House by on Tuesday, November 6th, because if the margins are close, that's going to uh, be a totally different conversation. All right, uh, Pam, you really scared me with this. I think we're showing, <laughs> um, I'm talking to my producer who's likes to scare me. Uh, this is the vice president. He's going to be leaving for a rally in Wisconsin. He's going to be campaigning on behalf of Scott uh, Walker, the governor there. Uh, but Jenna, uh, let me get your sense of where this battle is going and for leadership and control of the soul of each party. Um, obviously, Scott Walker, in the case of Republicans, is that conservative soul. Uh, to Antoine's point, uh, whether it's Nancy Pelosi or other, it's going to be a hard left person to, 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 to lead. I didn't I think say that. No, I didn't say oh, so. Right. I, I, I think it's going to be that. So no. do you think that 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 will be kind of the battle royale here for the leadership in Washington. I think so, and I think that that's really uh, the battle for the voters as well, is to say, okay, are we going to take a hard left here, and are we going to uh, really stop everything that the president um, has advanced in the last two years? Are we going to stop uh, religious liberty, sanctity of life issues? Are we going to uh, then turn to the hard left, which is really advocating for socialism, abortion on demand? I mean, so many things that are very, very hard left. And so that's what the voters really need to look for, um, is the margin of difference between the two parties here, and that's what uh, voters turning out on uh, Tuesday really need to focus on. And I think that in terms of leadership, we need to be prepared that Nancy Pelosi, while she's saying this type of rhetoric that, uh, you know, the Democrats will will just have all peace and calm, that's just frankly not true. Well, it's a flip of the coin. Who's well, going to be more hard left, though? You have to admit that, right? As someone who does Democratic politics on the congressional side for a living, let me just tell you this. What I know is who will, who will be in leadership next time around will be people who can campaign anywhere and who know how to govern our party to make sure because it's one thing who's to, more liberal to, to to, or or nancy Pelosi. i think i think mr clyron is one of those very few people in our party who can go anywhere and campaign that's not also, what i asked i mean he is right to the left of her right I, I, no he's from the south There's, you can't count jim clyron and nancy pelosi in the same so conversation. you don't think that right now let, if let they me, don't go the nancy pelosi route that they would go to a more moderating tone i, I think i think you'll see a mixed bag i All think right. you'll get i don't uh, think they have any moderates though i mean their their entire message what, what do you call is Conor completely Lane? Who do you call, what do you say about so, people because like look Conor at what Lane? they did with um look at what the congress has done through just all of the outrage and the outright hatred against president trump if they take over congress they've promised impeachment they've promised Jim. subpoenas 
they are they not going some, to have rhetoric. They do, they do is, have some moderates, but they're not the ones that are up and coming and being more popular. We're seeing a lot of popularity from people like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, people like Bernie Sanders in the last election. There was a lot. There was well, a Bernie huge Sanders, behind Bernie Sanders, Sanders is not a Democrat. When you look at Ms., um, the, the, Congress, the potential congressman from Brooklyn, you will know that she's not in the Congress yet. And the only reason she gets the attention she gets is because the right wants to make her this front person as it relates to well, the well, Democratic Well, it was a jarring win for her to, to meet Crowley and to she be that won, so I guess She the, won a low turnout election, yes. Do you think that the party turns harder left, though? That's what I'm asking. I, I, I mean, I, I, it, I, it, 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 within a nanosecond, if the results are in Tuesday, they're all going to start trooping out running for president. And most of them have pretty far left positions I don't, and are ceding to that end of the party. I don't think the party will go far left at all. I think the party will actually start to do more to cater to the hearts and the minds of voters across outside of California, New York, and Massachusetts. You don't think they make a hard charge I, to I do extreme. not, because Cavuto, I live by this. Listen, it's one you thing call me to... Cavuto? I'm sorry. <laughs> like Madonna. I, just, <laughs> I think it's one thing to get to the majority. It's another thing, another thing to maintain the majority. I think Democrats will be focused on that. Well, I know that cooler heads presumably prevail in that kind of situation. We have learned on both the right and the left that that oftentimes doesn't happen. But is it your sense that if Democrats were to swap, that that's a gift to Donald Trump then? Or how would you? No, I don't think so at all. Because I think that if um, if the House it does go Democrat, then we're going to just see an absolute stalling in Washington. We're going to see things oh, like impeachment. Now. We're going to see subpoenas. We're going to see well, the left just intensify right. This argument, I mean, but not too many be. Democrats have been talking about it. But the most I mean, they might wish have. it and think it, but they, the they're most, very careful about it. But right? the most vocal ones have. And I think that that's right. where the party itself is turning hard far left. And that's why voters need to come out and vote their values for what the midterms. Do you, what do you think? I think that I, Democrats have gone really far left. I think that in, talking about impeaching Donald Trump is a way to kind of drum him up support. I don't think that they'll actually impeach I do him. I don't think they're actually going to be Republicans talk about Democrats effort. saying that, though. Listen, yeah. you, you know? uh, again, as someone who does Democratic politics for a living, tell me who these people are because I don't see it. What I see across the country are Democrats talking about quality of life issues, and that's why you see us doing what we're doing in polls all across the country as it relates to the election a, on a Tuesday, November the message, 6th. A lot of the messaging, though, is resist and resist And Maxine Trump Waters resist. comes to mind. Okay. And all okay. of the most One vocal person. Democrats, <laughs> where, where all the most vocal Democrats, though, are saying that they're going to Going to go for impeachment. They're going to go for no, subpoenas, no, and that's what your not. leadership right. message is. You see, mainstream say. Democrats saying that's not the case. They're talking about the issues that matter to voters. Well, you were right on the health care thing, but we'll see what happens on these other issues, whether they resonate. All right, see, right? That's. Uh... <laughs> Thank you, Kabuda. All right, there you go. Uh, we have a lot more coming up, including this issue over birthright and citizenship and whether that's a gimme, that that should be the way things go. The president has made that a very, very big issue. We're going to be talking to a professor a little later who says he could be uh, uh, onto something there. And then a congressman who has quite the opposite view, that this is hurting Republicans and hurting America. Henry Cuellar is next.